So I would now like to open our event by acknowledging the lands that we are on. As we gather virtually, we may all find ourselves in different spaces, on different territories, on different lands. So I would like to invite everyone to reflect personally on the land where you find yourself today. Um, and please also share it in the chat if you wish to do so. So I am calling in from Toronto, where the University of Toronto operates, and this is the treaty land and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat and the Seneca. In order to reflect further upon the meaning of this acknowledgement and also to invite others to reflect in similar ways um, from within their own spaces, I situate myself as a settler of European ancestry who has benefited from the destructive colonial project on this land. This is a violent project which has worked for multiple centuries to dispossess Indigenous peoples of their homelands, cultures, and knowledges to instead impose settler European lifestyles and values. And this violence is ongoing. I have also grown up, as perhaps others of us have, uh, without really reflecting on the importance of land itself. For this reason, today I wish to express my gratitude for the land, for nurturing us and for caring for us, and for the Indigenous stewards and defenders of the land who have taken care of this place and who continue to take care of it and resist settler colonialism. So I acknowledge my own responsibility to likewise resist and deconstruct harmful colonial narratives and to work towards the goals of land back. Um, and fostering responsible, reciprocal, and caring relationships, both with one another and with the land. So in the spirit of building relationships, I am very pleased to present our speaker for today, Mr. Joel Mukudea. Joel is an all but dissertation candidate in the PhD program of social justice education at Boise University of Toronto. Today he will be presenting his recently published book chapter on peace and harmony through Ubuntu in a globalized world. Joel, thank you so much for being here today to speak about your work with all of us. I'll pass it over to you. Well, my pleasure. Thank you very much, Lois, for that uh, beautiful introduction. And uh, before I go any further, I would like to say my own uh, land acknowledgement. After I've said that, I would ask uh, Lois to uh, read to us the grounding quote, uh, which gives us the theme for this topic. While I acknowledge and comprehend that I do not fit the description of a settler on this beautiful land, I honor and acknowledge this land and its indigenous peoples, their strengths, their struggles, and sovereignty, and I join in the continuous quest for its decolonization in the letter and spirit of transformative truth and reconciliation. Over to you, Lois. Okay, so I um, will read the grounding quote that Joel has uh, put here for all of us. Uh, so we are called to assist the earth to heal her wounds and in the process heal our own indeed to embrace the whole creation and all its diversity, beauty and wonder. This will happen if we see the need to revive our sense of belonging to a larger family of life with which we have shared our evolutionary process. Thank you, Thank you very much, Lois. And that is a quotation from the late uh, Wangari Matai, a Kenyan matriarch who was awarded the prestigious Nobel Peace Prize for, uh, in 2004 in honor of her work to do with environmental rehabilitation. Our topic in the topic of my chapter is called Peace and Harmony Through Ubuntu in a Globalized World. So that grounding quote uh, gives us thought to work on as we go through the book chapter. Now, the book chapter, my primary purpose of this chapter is to understand the Southern African cultural worldview called Ubuntu. Now, just uh, 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 trying to find out, because Ubuntu sometimes comes up on a Google search as a, 
uh, internet uh, operating system, and the other times it comes up as this, this South African um, cultural worldview. So by a show of raise of uh, raising hands, how many of you um, are aware of this Ubuntu philosophy coming from Southern Africa, a gift to the world? All right. So um, if uh, Lois could take a tally so that we, we can, if we, when we do the review of this session, we'll be able to say, OK, when we started, uh, so many of the participants actually had a background in Ubuntu, in those who don't, uh, they, they are very much welcome. This is a forum for us to share, and sharing is one of the highest uh, principles and mantra of Ubuntu philosophy. So, thank you very much. You can, uh, 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 Lois, have you been able to count and have a tally? Yes, I've got it. I saw five hands. Okay, thank you very much. So, what are some of these uh, important mantras of uh, Ubuntu? Now, Ubuntu nurtures the belief in a universal bond of sharing that connects all humanity, and this is part of the reciprocity which emphasizes the, the relevance of using empathy, openness, and cooperation to resolve our common problems in order to achieve peace and harmony. Those two words, peace and harmony, um, must be seen in a much wider context. Peace doesn't just mean absence of war, but it refers to the um, coexistence, co-habitation, uh, interrelatedness, inter and intra-relatedness of all uh, species, of all things seen and unseen, living and non-living in our environment. That is the concept of Ubuntu, where uh, human beings are part of a much, much wider uh, context of existence, rather than just thinking about ourselves only as um, the, the entities who matter in this world. This, just to give a, a perspective of who and what is in existence in the cosmology of Ubuntu, human beings are only recent arrival uh, on this universe, and therefore we, it also uh, it makes us um, understand that as recent arrivals, we should be able to learn from entities who have inhabited the earth much longer and much earlier than us. I take trees, for example, they, they have evolved over time. They know a thing or two about interrelatedness, about communing with other entities. How do they survive? Look at is something is commonplace as water. We almost take it for granted, but water has been in existence for a long, long time. From that humble raindrop joining with another raindrop and, and ending up in our river systems and finally into the ocean. And that cycle, that hydrological cycle going in its, in its pace, at its pace, at a, a comfortable pace for it, if you look at how water flows, how it negotiates uh, obstacles in its way, if you have had a chance to, to, to observe a river in, 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 uh, as it flows, you know, there the, the are rocks sometimes, sometimes it's even forced to change its course, but it still does what it, it does, what it has been created to do. So we can learn a thing or two about some of those um, uh, characteristics exhibited by the inhabitants of this universe who have been here 
earlier than us and know a thing or two about living in harmony. So peace and harmony. Harmony. Um, harmony means that everything and everyone is participating in a way which complements everyone else, every other every item that, that is in existence. So one of the mantras of, uh, of uh, Ubuntu is that I am because of all that is. All that is incorporates and includes everything in our environment, seen and unseen, living and non-living. Now, to what extent do we conceptualize our lives as belonging to others or have human beings all of a sudden thought they are the most intelligent, they are the most articulate, they can temper or temper with that harmony and have their own selfish ends and to what extent will that um, result in? Is it a, a, a good way of uh, living at the expense of the environment? After all, the environment has been created for us. We should be thankful for that and not exploit it as we uh, shall find out what is happening uh, around us in terms of abuse and misuse of our immediate environment. So the, the, this chapter also explores how the Nobel Rory Lolly Head, uh, Archbishop um, Desmond Tutu utilized the principles of Ubuntu during his leadership of the South African uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission. How was it possible that former arch enemies, people who were fighting in tooth and nail and brutally on the streets, were able to overcome all that strife and sit at a round table in order to create harmony and peace in that uh, land of South Africa. We, 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 the, we, the people who watch the news and watch the strife sometimes could not even uh, understand how that could be possible, how those policemen and uh, uh, legal officials were using violence to subjugate another another group of people, and there was violence all over. But at some point, it was agreed that yes, there is a higher authority which we should succumb to, and we should we should um, realize our humanity so that we can live in peace. Yes, it's an ongoing project. There is still violence over there. I'm not trying to 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 to, to um, belittle. The, the injustices which are still prevalent. But in terms of Ubuntu, um, Ubuntu is a process where there is room for growth, personal growth, as well as um, community growth. So each the personal growth has to happen within the community, not to look at uh, oneself as being the center of attraction, but that you live in communion with other people. So hence the, 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 the expression that I am um, because we are, which we shall go into, into further detail. So in this um, example of the successes of Ubuntu in, in mitigating the strife the, which was uh, prevalent in Southern Africa, uh, especially in South Africa, uh, lessons of peace and reconciliation efforts merge with the premise that Ubuntu worldview offers sustainability, peace, and harmony in the building of human relations to the world. So there is an example of an otherwise acrimonious and really desperate and violent situation which was able to, to be reined in because of that philosophy of Ubuntu. And so the other point, the primary purpose of this chapter uh, was also to focus on Ubuntu's universal bond of sharing, which connects all humanity and supports synergies 
that enhance peace and harmony. So these, um, these uh, deliberations, um, I will now look at the key concepts. If uh, uh, Lois, could, if you could have the slide with the key concepts. The key concepts, yes, the key concepts in, in the book. So the first item is about personhood. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a self, so-called self-made person, or do you see yourself as part of a community? So I'll be comparing the cosmological um, uh, implications of Ubuntu way of uh, thinking versus the Western way of thinking. So the, the Ubuntu philosophy uh, suggests that in practice is that I am because we are and I am because of all that is. One cannot belong to themselves. After all, one didn't cause themselves. One was born into a family. Everyone, that is the understanding. Everyone was born into family. So, Family is the wider community. And by family here, we just don't mean the human element uh, part of family, but the environment element of family. All those um, items of the environment which you, uh, you happen to be living in and communing with, there must be conscious effort to have that harmony existing between the human family as well as the other entities in our environment. And hence, uh, Dr. Uh, John Samuel Mbiti, uh, who passed away in 2019, is one who is known to have made this uh, very valid pro proclamation. This proclamation is only a written version of what was communed with people um, orally. So when the colonizer came, or the satellite, uh, settler community came, they were uh, always saying, well, you are saying that, but where is it written? So here we have the first uh, um, edition of this uh, mantra of Ubuntu, that I am because we are, and since we are, therefore I am. We share and we are. So, you see, that element of sharing is the, the marrow of Ubuntu. If you are on your own and just do things without looking over at your brother, your sister, your uncle, your neighbor, then you, you, you're not sharing anything. You're not... Uh, a, a, a congened member of the family of men and women. Because we have another saying of the same, uh, on the same lines, where we, in Africa we say, it takes a village to raise a child. So um, it's everyone's business to make sure that child, that particular child, Every child is raised with that sense of community. So it is the responsibility of whoever are the authorities, the parents, the uncles, the aunts, the, the, and, the, and the, the environment itself to educate a, a, a being because we are born unfinished. You see, if we, if we didn't have family to teach us you know, how to speak, we wouldn't be able to to use the language we are using. So it's, 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 it's basic understanding. So in Zulu or Xhosa or Nguni or in, uh, in Shona, uh, all those Bantu languages, they have a, the, the word for a person has the stem of NTU. 
NTU means a person. And so when you have Ubuntu, the U part of it, the prefix U, U B, U B, means belonging to. Then the NTU is the stem of that term, is the stem. That's the root of personhood. That is where we all belong as a human uh, family. And therefore, in Zulu or in, in Tosa, uh, Onguni, these are all local languages in Southern Africa. Um, and I include Shona there, which is spoken in, in Zimbabwe. We say, Umuntu, all right? You still have that Ntu. That is the family part of it, the NTU. That's the family. So the U, the U means belonging to. You are always belonging to in order to express your personhood. You cannot just uh, say, I am, w without belonging anywhere. And so, umuntu, ngumuntu, is a person, is a person, ngabantu, is, is a person because of people. You cannot declare, okay, just imagine a scenario where uh, somehow you happen to be all alone and you claim personhood. Well, what does that mean? It can only amount to a mountain of beans because if you're by yourself how you, you, you how do you even know your, yourself and that um we 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 we're going to look at the, how it contrasts with uh, western ways of, of thinking so um uh, according to desmond tutu um in, in, in his um statement in 2009 he says um we we say a person is a person through other people. It is not, I think, I, therefore I am. Okay, we shall come back to this, I think, or, or therefore I am. Uh, who in the audience knows who said that? It's a, it's a Western philosopher who, who kind of said, well, this is the essence of being. You see, if, you, if you're able to think, the, the, therefore, I am, you know, the, therefore you are. Who is that uh, personality? There's a philosopher of that name. Okay. Being part. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you so much there. Um, you see, De Deca, you know, this French philosopher uh, was, you know, kind of popular in, in, in saying that. And that became the bedrock of personhood insofar as Western uh, philosophy is concerned. So uh, Desmond Tutu refutes that and says, we should say, I am human because I belong. I participate, I share. Therefore, a person with Ubuntu is an open and available uh, and is available to others affirming of others and they don't feel threatened that others are able and good for he or she has proper self-assurance that comes from knowing that he or she belongs to a greater whole. So the idea of belonging is part and parcel of what Ubuntu is all about. You cannot be an outsider You've got to participate. You've got to be part of what is going on. And we shall see now the contrast between the, that kind of thinking and the, the so-called participatory democracy of Western uh, dispensations. So by that self um, assertiveness, you are able to have self-assurance that comes from belonging and from knowing that you belong to a greater whole, a greater whole or a greater community and you're not diminished by others or humiliated by others when others are tortured or are expressed or treated if they were less 
than who they are. So that's on page 34 to 35 of Desmond Titus' book. It's all part of the reference which you, you get at the end of this session. So when you see others uh, being mistreated, even if you are not being mistreated, you should be de you should feel diminished because that's part of the humanity. Nobody should be mistreating anyone else because it's like you're mistreating yourself because we are all part of a family. Like we said at the beginning, it takes a village to raise a child. And then the Dalai Lama chimes in in 1992. He also uh, uh, agrees with Desmond Tutu philosophically and practically that um, all human beings must learn to no longer work only for the benefit of themselves, their family or their nation, but to benefit uh, humanity. Universal responsibility will be the key to human survival. Yes, because we're talking of survival here. Um, it is the it is the best ground to build peace, equitable sharing of world resources, and genuine respect for the environment on behalf of future generations. So here's another element which is being introduced by Ubuntu philosophy. We are not just thinking of ourselves selfishly, thinking, "Well, this is our life." No, we owe it to the next generation. What kind of um, legacy or what kind of endowment are we leaving for the next generation? So whatever action we are doing, if, in, if it is agriculture, production, uh, motor uh, transportation, uh, and so on, we should be saying, okay, what we are doing for, with all the knowledge we now have, is this harmful to our environment? In what way is it going to um, appreciate or depreciate our legacy to the next uh, generation? So all those are ideas which are covered in this chapter. In the more detail, we will now look at the critique of the, the, the chapter. Uh, next slide, please. So the, 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 the critique here now, uh, unlike what um, uh, Decker, you know, said, the Western philosopher. I think, therefore, I am. You know, that's translation from the Latin because the scholars at the time used to think of themselves as learned. Once they use these, um, these, the, 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 um, um, original languages, because much of the writing then was either in Greek or in light in, in, in Latin. So you'd sound very educated when you are. Uh, <laughs> addressing a group and then you say cogito ego sum which uh, translated means cogito i think ergo therefore you see that comes in with even with your uh, algebra how you used to prove those theorems ego yes then sum which means i am so that's latin there now we 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 now contrast that with what ubuntu is talking about. Ubuntu doesn't just preach, it actually puts into action those philosophical ideas. So what are these um, elements which are engaged in within Ubuntu uh, philosophy? This one is by Decker, is just thinking about the individual. I am, therefore, uh, the, 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 I think, therefore I am. Okay, but where do you come from? How do you get there? How did you get that thought? How do you train? Who trained you? You see, so it, it's almost, um, um, you know, eliminating oneself from one's community. Because who taught you to think? It must be the people who are around you. Who were the people around you? The family, the, the, the community, the tree. Sometimes you learn something from the sun as it rises. It warms up. Then you say, oh, okay, so as the sun rises, yes, it generates some heat. There's, some, so there's something there. If the sun sets, then there's darkness, in, or if there's no moonlight. And so, so these are things which nature is actually te teaching you as you're growing up. You, it's not just your thought. At times, you, you feel very hungry. 
you, you need food. You, 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 or you, at times you feel lonely. You need you, you, company. You, you, you need to talk to someone. Now that brings in the empathy part of it, where you need to be able to uh, put yourself in other entities' shoes. The sun, for example. If the sun, if we were to imagine the sun were to disappear for forever, well, how will the how would you exist? So, how what relationship are you building your, between yourself and the sun, between yourself and the tree growing by by your garden, or the the tree growing in the forest? Yes, that one in the forest is there for a purpose. So there must be that empathetic way of looking at nature, of what is within nature. Hence, you de de uh, develop that capacity for reciprocity. That is a give and take um, uh, between ourselves and nature, ourselves and other human beings. And this uh, a way of thinking, this empathy, when you put yourself in the shoes of your pet, for example. Um, how does your pet feel when you abandon it? Or how does it feel um, when somebody is being um, abused and you're just watching, you're there? Or how does it feel? Have you put yourself in that person? Or even the perpetrator of that abuse, you see, if they don't have empathy, then they don't feel a thing towards whatever is being um, uh, put at risk. So by engaging empathy at various complex systems which interact at a fine grade and a broader spatial and temporal scales, that's it. I'm trying to summarizing a lot there. I'm trying to say you live in the moment, whatever is happening, the, 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 you must have an empathetic response to what is taking place. You, you, you got to have show responsibility and an awareness that this too could be happening to me. If this was happening to me, how would I feel? Ah, and there are consequences when you don't have that empathy. Let us look at last summer, last summer in British Columbia. There were fires, there were floods happening. Ah, why were they happening? Oh, the footage we saw on TV showed us swaths of um, previously uh, covered, uh, forest covered areas which had been depleted completely, you know, by harvesting the forest. Uh, and then that gave room for those, uh, for, 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 for those uh, floods to happen. Because if they were, if those forests were still there, that's why I talked about the forest earlier on. That yes, think about that tree. It's, it's far away from from your comfortable couch in your house. But if you're going to destroy that part, it's coming to to haunt you because those floods now affected other people who didn't even go out to cut that timber. That timber, those forests. I'm just using that as an example. It had been in existence for hundreds of years. But because of a human need, we say, oh, no, we are humans. We control this. Let's go and cut that. Oh, no, no. Actually, I own that property. That's mine. So I can sell, you know, whatever quantity I want, anytime I want. Why, why do you want to do that? Oh, no, no, no. This is my property because... I, I need um, I, I, I need profits from this land. You see, see, yeah, but there are consequences to that, and the consequences were in full um, in full world view when those floods happened. They followed the areas where which had been carelessly, recklessly been deforested, and so nature takes its course. You see. It, to one extent, one we, we should remember that nature does not need us. We are the ones who depend on nature. 
And trees have been here on earth much longer than us. The, the rain, the forests, the, 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 the oceans, the, the, the rivers, and all that. The, some rivers may not dry up, but they come back at some point and so on. Nature, you know, has a way of balancing itself. But when human interference comes in, there, there we have a problem. That's why we need to be thinking empathetically of whatever actions we are taking uh, towards nature. So those are the fine-grained, broader, uh, spatial, and temporal scales of what is happening. So we, in the wound, we are always aware of what is the consequences of our actions. Are they building or are they destroying? Are we going to be better off or we are going to be worse off? And the, the final uh, acid test is what legacy are we leaving for the next generation? That is what it's, it's, it's all about with Ubuntu. Whereas with, the, um, with the Western philosophy, well, it's economies of scale. I want to make more money, so I must you know, invest in this, in, invest in that, uh, you know, um, to, to, to take off, talk of the carbon cycle. The trees manufacture food. Yeah, all right. In the presence of sunlight. Yes, we've done that in all in photosynthesis lessons in, in biology and chemistry and all that. And what do they do with that food? Okay, yeah, some of it they use it to, for them to, to grow taller and fatter and, and so on. But much of it is, give, is they give it away. Look, look at that orange tree in your, in your garden. You see, just look at it. Yeah, somebody will claim, well, but I've been, you know, adding, you know, food. I've been adding fertilizer to it. I've been doing my part to make sure it, it, it grows well and gives me good fruit. Yes, it, you have been doing that, but uh, on its own, how much of that orange fruit is actually used by the orange tree or by the fig tree. That's a sign of nature's generosity. You, you see, nature uses nature. That's working in harmony. It doesn't, it doesn't kill. It, it, it allows entities within nature which, whose DNA has been uh, characterized to perform certain functions and they do it whether you know so, somebody is watching or not whereas humans we are more concerned about our own self-aggrandizement and self, self uh, you know quick profit we want to make quick profit i want to be the 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 the, the owner of this i'm going to do be you know genetically modify this and that so that there is a shorter growing period and, and, and i can uh, you know realize profits in almost in the blink of an eye ah that's impatience whereas ubuntu has more patience they think of a seed for example most varieties of seeds you know you, you put them in the soil you almost forget about it Do, can you empathize and think what's going on in that seed yes it takes time patience is a virtue until that seed comes up have you ever thought of what is actually taking place underground below the surface that's why i was talking about the uh, a, a, a broader spatial the broader spatial think of um, phenomena beyond one's self and empathize as to what is going on so patience in the time it takes but no, we are in for instant gratification. So in order to increase uh, production, what are we going to do? OK, we will think of chemical fertilizers. Uh, well, chemical fertilizers, but well, my, my crop is going to be in competition with, with all these weeds. Ah, all those weeds have a, have a purpose. They, they were there for, they were put there for, for a purpose by nature. Ah, no, 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 we, 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 I will eliminate them. Now, so somebody invent, invents pesticides, okay? Oh, no, no, fungicides as well. Oh, no, 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 and herbicides as well. So I can actually, you know, use these chemicals to control what grows in my patch of land. And uh, therefore, 
um, the um, will maximize my profit. Ah, but okay, I'll go back to the Latin day. Okay, the most educated will say, well, yes, cogito ego sum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even here, that all those words which end in C I D E, they are also derivatives from the Latin. Okay, here is the full the full version of it. Those words come from the the stem kido, C I D O, which is a verb in Latin, which means I kill. So the idea is, or rather, they will let me let me conjugate the the entire um, the verb for you. It's kido, kidere, which means to kill. Kisi means means I I have killed. Kisum, killing. That's a gerund. There is killing. So when you add anything to the soil which ends with C I D E, that means you're killing. Oh, and what is the common name we use for a killer? Anything agent for a killer is poison. So you're actually poisoning the soil, all right? You're poisoning the soil. The entities in that soil whose job was to, oh, we have earthworms. Oh, how many of you have actually looked at earthworms and see how they, 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 they uh, convert the leaf and all that litter into soil? They're there in the soil working for what they've been constructed to do. That's their DNA. That's their function. But there we're going to, to, to kill them. Ah, and why, what's the generic name for a killing agent? It's poison. So what does it make of us when we eat food which has been grown in poisoned soils? Oh, we say, oh, oh. The, the, the manufacturer will say, well, the dosage here or the amount of poison is not lethal enough. Oh, not lethal enough. But how come now in the United States, for example, there are so many cases going to the legal uh, process of people claiming that, yeah, because I was using this pesticide, all my working life. I've developed cancer. I've been poisoned. And there's proof of that. There's medical proof of that. And yet in the past, those creators or makers of those pesticides, fungicides, and herbicides were praised as heroes. Remember the, the grounding um, quotation which Lois read to us? We, you see, we, it, what part are we playing? when we use poisons in order to prepare the ground for our own short-term benefits and profits. And what does it uh, make of us to be part of that process? Or the usual claim or the plausible uh, claim is well, the, the, the population is growing at such a rate that, you know, we need uh, to maximize production, production, production of food. Otherwise, people will go hungry. Now, have you ever done that research to find out that having squandered all that, all those uh, resources, much of that food is actually thrown away because of poor distribution? It's, it's not even used. So you are killing the soil, uh, producing poisoned or contaminated food, which you, you squanders a lot of resources uh, and yet it ends up on the on the uh, on the waste and waste is now a big is waste disposal is now a big uh, issue countries are having to think you know outside the box of yes we, we, what do we do with this uh, with this waste and in the process just imagine in order for those crops to grow, most of them are from flowering, uh, they're flowering plants. So they need cross-pollination. And much of those pesticides are going to kill your bees. Bees who, whose job, whose DNA is just to, to create, you know, to, to cross-pollinate. So what are we doing? That's suicide, you know, first, first, uh, first class. So, so those those words, whenever you come across those words, 
which end in CIDE, take a moment and say, is this the right way to, to, to proceed? We have those words like homicide, pesticide, fungicide, sororicide, all those. Think about those. Put empathy in, in, your, in your thought. So this idea now goes, uh, is the heart and soul of Ubuntu ways of thinking. Whatever happened to companion planting? Nature has its way of controlling, um, you know, items, items can grow in certain locales where others cannot grow because of uh, not um, poison, but because of the characteristics of those particular um, uh, plants. For example, marigold will chase away those aphids and stuff from your cabbage, you know, from this and that. So instead of using a pesticide, which is going to do more damage, oh, and the story doesn't even end there because all those CIDEs, those poisons, will leach into the, into the ground, into our water systems, and then end up uh, polluting rivers, polluting oceans. And when we drink, we're drinking poisoned water. It's never what nature would have ideally provided for us. So by that human uh, selfish uh, th streak of quick profits and instant gratification, we actually poison our own environment. So Ubuntu takes a, a holistic idea of, um, uh, of the environment to uh, look at our actions to um, self-reflect on how we are either abating or actually destroying our own circumstances. So, the, sorry, Joel. Uh, just, uh, just uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, just to keep you on track for time. I know you wanted some um, some reminders. So. Okay. Um, All right. Thank you. So, how much time do I have? <laughs> um, well, we've got five minutes, but feel free to to go. Oh, on five minutes. Like. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank no you for worries. that. Um, for, for that. Um, um, advice. Well, the, the, the you we have uh, advised them that they can access the chapter anytime. Yeah. Okay. So the the um. The transformative, this transformative Ubuntu environment education uh, would be so useful because um, also there is um, in enhancing the quality of life. And the other the great thinkers who like Ari Mazrui, uh, who is talking about ecological curiosity is an aspect of um, Western science in a quest for an explanation and comprehension. Uh, which uh, is not quite a, a tenable uh, philosophy because the that kind of reasoning which makes men think themselves is above creation not working in harmony with with creation so uh, next slide please um so in terms of uh, government governance we might say well so what is it that that Ubuntu is all about? So Ubuntu frowns upon anarchy while it is, uh, stimul uh, simultaneously avoids dictatorship by the majority. This is uh, because Ubuntu um, decision-making processes, unlike the Western uh, ways of conducting democracy, are based on consensus, uh, conversions, and caucusing. That means everyone together. It takes a family, a village, to raise the child to to move in harmony. So uh, that contrasts with the Western philosophers, like the the, uh, the Darwinian notion of survival of the fittest. So the, the, it's only the the fittest who will survive; the others uh, are washed away. And also the um, in, in Ubuntu, we engage dignity, respect, and empathy uh, to reconcile and be, be have a much more meaning, meaningful existence 
the, whereas the, the Westerners will say, well, might is right. Because I defeat you, well, I can take everything. And also, that destroys harmony. Um, the, the, uh, however, within Ubuntu, there's been some criticism that, well, there's too much patriarchal, uh, you know, indulgence. It's mostly the men who do that. But when you investigate it further, you find that, yes, women are actually part of the, mat the matriarchy is actually supreme. Because when intermarriages happen, you have someone, the matriarch, who is already familiar with the, her, her original family, comes to this other family, and the, she, uh, you know, increases the, the kindredness in the, 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 that group. So the, the women, matriarchy is always held in great um, uh, esteem. Uh, next slide, please. So in conclusion, we're going to celebrate the, the diversity and inclusiveness of Ubuntu, uh, which emphasizes the, several of the typical ideas and mechanism of traditional uh, African approaches to advance peace and harmony. And um, Desmond Tutu again says on page 254, uh, we are different so that we can know our need for another person. Ultimately, we are not ultimately self-sufficient. Anyone who claims that is, 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 is telling a lie. So you get uh, some of the um, uh, billionaires here, we say, oh, I am self-made. Oh, self-made, did you cause yourself? And when they claim that self-made personality, they, also, they forget that whatever they are using, they also use infrastructure which has been paid for by everybody's taxes the, the roads the airways and so on those are part of of a, uh, the common pool and yet they claim that well they are self-made they're never self-made that is a preposterous lie and yet the the we are so gullible to to take that one in because it's, it's, if they think themselves within community then they will uh, humble themselves and be more uh, thoughtful about their actions, whether they are uh, building or destroying nature. So, um, the, the, uh, the, so in conclusion, uh, since you have access to the chapter, you have room to ask questions. I will just go on to the, the, the next slide, which um, shows you the, um, the references. The, those will be shared uh, to, to everyone um, through Lois. Uh, and also, I would like to say thank you. G gratitude is one of the uh, essence of uh, Ubuntu philosophy. We should be thankful to nature and reciprocate accordingly. So I'm going to say that uh, using the um, local vernacular. Uh, so next slide, please, for the vernacular. Yes, so we have Tatenda, that's Shona, Siawonga, that's uh, Ndebele, or uh, Kalanga. Ziko Mukwambili, that's the Malawian, uh, Nyabonga, that's um, another local language, Danki, that's Afrikaans, Asante, uh, that's um, Swahili, Abrigada, that's um, Portuguese, and uh, the, the rest there. Uh, so you can recognize, if you can recognize some of those as part of um, my gratitude for your attendance, and then it's over to, uh, to Lois. Um, to, to make conclusions or ask questions if uh, we still have time. Thank you very much for taking part. Uh, thank you. Joel, thank you so much. This was fantastic. This is such an interesting presentation. And I think um, I can um, just offer gratitude on, on behalf of everyone for, uh, for being here today to share your work. Um, I am cognizant that the event was until one, but I have time. If you have time, Joel, um, and people have questions. Um, oh yeah, I, I have. I have time. I have. I dedicated the entire two hours to, the, to this session, so oh. I'm, I'm available. I'm available. Uh, I'm, I know the always competing times <laughs> for students. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, so if every, if anyone um, has to go, then we completely understand. Um, but if you would like to ask a question, uh, Joel is here. Um, perhaps we could put back the, oops, the slides on questions and discussion uh, in case anyone would want to engage with those. Yeah, so feel free to raise your hand or type into the chat if you have any comments for Joel.
Hello. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. Well, sure, sure. Harriet. Yeah, so yeah. This is Harriet, Brother Joel, that was awesome. Um, of course, well, I've thank heard you. So thank you for I've participating. Heard about, you heard about Ubuntu, but you've made it very, very clear exactly what it is. Of course, we all rattle the mantra, I am because you are or we are, but exactly what that means. Thank you very much for explaining. And by the way, you forgot to add my country. Thank you. Medasi. Add that oh. to your question. <laughs> oh, okay. Could you could could you send to um the, the, the message to, to Lois so that it can be included? Because it's, Ubuntu is permeable. It's, it's it's not you know stuck in in in, uh, in in one one situation. We're very inclusive. So if Lois could take the what would be the um is it Ghanaian or T T it's is a it can. T? It's a can. Oh, it's Akan. Oh, Akan. okay. So, so what would be the Akan equivalent? I'll put it in the chat. Oh. Akan. Me, da, da, as. So what that is D, he says belonging to what? Akan for Midasi. Oh, Midasi. That's how you pronounce it. Midasi. Yeah, Midasi. Ah. Wow. Mm. Thank you. Akan. So we learn uh, another language i want to ask you another question if uh, oh somebody else's hands is up so i'll wait okay oh, go ahead um i wanted to ask you another question um my my research is looking at um uh, how as an indigenous community we black or african people can work with the justice system okay to rehabilitate our youth how do you think ubuntu would fit in here oh that's a beautiful question that's was what we meant by personal growth in personal growth people are not going to be perfect because people are going to make mistakes they're going to 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 um to to make errors of judgment or the errors of commission and omission and so on so there is room for uh, advocacy and ad, ad, ad advice from the community because it takes a village to raise a child. And by the same token, when an error has happened, it doesn't mean the end of, uh, of, of growing. There's always growth until we die. And then we move on to, you know, the, then the, and so on. So there is um, a restorative justice. So this is the thing. Whereas a Western, Western uh, jurisdictions and dispensations only look at the punitive part of it. They want to punish. They want to send you to, 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 to where you're going to work for the state or where you're going to pay the penalty for the fault in which you have, uh, uh, you know, either knowingly or unknowingly. Remember, they even say uh, ignorance is no excuse. It is no defense, right? If Western, the, 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 okay, if, all right, let me go back a little. I'm getting too emotional here, sorry. <laughs> because, you know, in Western, in, in Ubuntu, the, we say, kuziwa mbuya which means to know your grandmother. You need to be told, your parents ought to tell you that that's your grandmother, right? So that you know. In other words, they will tell you the rule. This is what happens. This is what is acceptable. Well, you, you break the rule, or you, you make a fault, then there is time for rehabilitation, so as to rebuild that harmony. You cannot, you cannot just be penalized for that mistake and be penalized for good. Then for, for forever, no. There is room for, to rehabilitation. That is part of re restorative justice, as opposed to um, uh, the 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 way you know the criminal justice system works which is very punitive and then you are labeled for life that this is what you did there's a record there the idea is to in ubuntu is to yes acknowledge that you have, you have made a mistake you've made you, you committed a wrong you compensate for that for that wrong you go to the people who were the family you wronged the, you ask for your for, for their forgiveness. The, the you you pay back whatever it is, either in money form or in cattle form or whatever. 
you re in re restitute the harmony which was there before. That is the whole point, not to permanently label somebody as a criminal or a fault maker, because everybody else, everybody has made a mistake you see, somewhere along the line. That's part of growing up. We've all made mistakes. Some of them, so uh, we, we were just doing it as a as a prank or as a as a way of discovery. That's why there is that key uh, proverb in the system, in the Ubuntu system, which says, in order to know your grandmother, your parents must tell you that that is your grandmother. So, with all that, what it. Uh, implies you will now know how to behave to is is not a stranger is somebody actually closer to you because that's the root of your your personhood so we, that idea of teaching in order to educate so that you you let uh, the uninitiated know what the rules are whereas western democracies will say ignorance is no defense you should have known you, 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 you committed this, this is a crime. You should know, you should have, how would I know? If I, I, I mean, take, take okay, I'll take a, a situation where I had to uh, mediate in a, in, a, in a legal situation where a, 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 a young family, a highly educated family of uh, a, 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 a professed accountant and a, a registered, a state registered nurse, the big home, uh, in, in Africa, they were able, they would raise their child in a particular way. They, they would discipline their child. They tried that here on arrival. Before they knew it, the police had already apprehended the father who had, you know, applied the physical, you know, a, a slap on the on the back of the head to, to this child who had misbehaved according to, 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 to the father. And then they, they had to come to our community to say, look, my children have been um, have been taken over by the what do we call it the the um, child what protection no 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 it's a service it's a service which is yes that's the system here but back home anybody even an uncle could have just stepped in and say look you are not supposed to do that if I see you do that again you you'll be in a lot of trouble that will be end of story but here there is now legal uh, paperwork to say so-and-so is a criminal, abused the child, used his hand to beat the child, that's child abuse. You see, those are some of the, the things where you find it's different. Whereas in Africa, it's everybody's business to make sure that people grow up. And by growing up, you grow up either by, by following those rules or you, you make mistakes and then you are rehabilitated. That's why I was, at the beginning, I was talking about the that desperate situation of images of South Africans, the authorities, the police, the using police dogs, using tear gas, using, they, they were in a strife, strife, strife uh, stricken situation. But when Ubuntu's dispensation came to, to the fore in the negotiations, they were able to say, all right, you are still human, I am human, you are being inhuman to me, but I still recognize your humanity. We are still human. So let's, let's really calibrate our relationships and become what Ubuntu is all about. And that is to see each other with empathy. And that's why one, it was almost like a miracle when that, that uh, resolution came into place. And that was not the only situation. Take the, 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 the Irish question. Remember the, the Good Friday Agreement? That Good Friday Agreement only came to be because of Ubuntu intervention. You see, the, the people who got the accolade at that time were, you know, President um, Clinton. He was saying, oh, he, no, he, he did a marvelous job. No, there was part of Ubuntu diplomacy. They went in, which is um, a typical of Ubuntu. They don't want to publicize what they're doing for the good. They went in, they talked to both parties, and, and made it clear that just as you are wishing, you know, 
um, Jerry uh, Jerry Adams not to exist anymore. I mean, you you call him a terrorist. He's still Irish. He's still he's still part of your DNA here. Yeah? So you must find a way of accommodating those different different opinions. Remember when we said oh, uh, the, 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 the democracy is not by you know public vote like in the Western um, dispensations where a, a group of um, you know a political group can win an election by the effect of one one person and then they become the de facto you know dictatorship we call it a dictatorship of the majority because all the other voices are silenced you can't even negotiate no whereas within ubuntu there's always a negotiation there's always caucusing there's always converging you converge you gravitate to what is useful what is beneficial to the entire environment not just human beings if, if you you have parties who are in the for example western democracies who are in the pockets of industrial uh, uh, mines they are they, they only consider just extraction extraction from from the environment without thinking of the consequences remember i mentioned the 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 the, the disaster in, in in bc in the summer we saw it happen live on on tv those floods and fires happening at the same time if every every thought every person's ideas were incorporated into the, those decision making processes we wouldn't have those disasters we wouldn't have those disasters i uh, did uh, uh, harriet uh, is, is that does it somehow answer your query uh, harriet sorry Indeed, you have more than answered it. Thank you very much. I think there was somebody else also with her hands up waiting. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. It's my pleasure. Thank it's you. all part of Ubuntu. Uh, thank you so much, Joel and Harriet, for that question. Uh, Serena had a question, but she had to leave. Um, so perhaps we can touch base later and see if we can get her question. Um, does anyone else uh, have something they would like to ask or comment to Joel? Uh, feel free to do so in the chat or just re use the raise hand function. Okay, it seems there's no more questions for now, Joel. So thank you so much. Um, would you like to say anything um, as some concluding remarks? Oh, th thank you, thank you for for, for uh, affording me this time. Uh, again, I'm very grateful to uh, the department for um, availing this opportunity for students to come together and share uh, ideas. And that's what Ubuntu is all about: always co communing and uh, uh, finding the best solutions, so which are sustainable and uh, built on the uh, anticipation of his generations coming after us to inherit a better environment than we we inherited. Thank you very much, uh, Lois, for the wonderful work. Thank you, Joel, for being here. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Yes, <laughs> can use the clap <laughs> function you. as well. Thank you. thank you. That's so interesting, Joel, and so important as well, giving us a, a deeper understanding of Ubuntu. Really appreciate it. Um, so everyone will well, be able my to. Pleasure. Uh, my to... pleasure. Um, I, I, is the, the, are the slides going to be available to everyone? Are you going to send yeah. some? Yeah, I can for sure send out the slides and the recording of this talk will also be available. Oh, and the recording. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Would you favor me with a copy? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. um, people will be I, I was just being facetious. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, and it, 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 the other thing is the humor. Um, part of Ubuntu learning is is to to learn in comfort, to learn in in harmony with others. So uh, things like proverbs, riddles, uh, sing songs is there's always uh, an activity uh, which will make it, um, which will make the the lesson um, or the learning uh, stay with one. 
I know the riddles are context-based, but then that's part of the acquisition of language facility. And that language facility is always um, a, 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 the, the, the generation of the mind and um, expression of uh, self-awareness, uh, as well as awareness of the, the, the local environment. So that's the vocabulary there is, is very rich and um, it's always context uh, based but with a mind that whatever um, successes even in the classroom because the competition you see competition yes is all right in order to make yourself the best person you can be but only within competing in community with others well that that excellence is to to, to, to uh, spread right across the, the, the your once immediate environment because that way you are not uh, being selfish. You are saying, oh, okay, this is a better way of doing things. This is a safer way of doing things. This is a more sustainable way of doing things. Nobody knows everything all at once, but by sharing um, in harmony with nature, not just is among human beings. No, we should be considering the, all the other entities. How does it affect the oceans, what we were doing? How does it affect uh, the well-being of uh, uh, people in other, in other communities? In other, we're not the only community. So we should always be aware of the totality of community and the environment, that we are not uh, the apex of the environment. We're only part of it, you know. So we, see, we should imagine ourselves as uh, benefiting from the uh, environment as, as dinner participants at a, at a round table where everybody is going to have a share of what is, what, you know, providence has, you know, given us. Because we didn't create, you know, all these uh, natural uh, entities which we benefit from. So by benefiting, uh, we should also be reciprocating by retaining that gratitude to whoever it's, it's, it's due. Um, we, we have an expression, I will end on this note here. Um, the, we say, Kandiro Kanoenda Kunova Kamwe. The ka, C A, the ka uh, prefix, it means. Um, or suggest the diminutive, the smallest amount. So when we say candiro, candiro means a serving bowl. We are saying um, a serving bowl of the least amount, um, you know, deserves another. In other words, translated into, into English, it would mean a good turn deserves another. But something is lost in the translation there. You see, the, this good turn, uh, in English, he assumes that, well, the giver has a lot to give, all right? The giver has a lot to give, so it's natural. Well, he can give or he can choose not to give. But in, in vernacular, in the world of vernacular, it means um, this giving at times is sacrificial. It's something which you would want to, to, to have yourself. It's, is that a little morsel of food left in, in that serving bowl? You would rather have it, but you recognize the importance and the value of the person next door to you. Because if they were not there, you wouldn't even claim to be a person. So because of their presence, you'd rather sacrifice that they get it. So that's the good thing we're talking about. Not giving out of plenty, no, but giving out of the least you have. Uh, which which uh, glorifies and endorses the importance of community. That on your own, you are nobody. Whereas in Western philosophers, I mean Western uh, dispensation will say, well, I'm self-made. I can, I, can, I can afford a rocket to, to, to the moon. Or I can uh, afford a rocket to, 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 to 10 minutes into space. Ah, but at what cost? At what cost to the environment? At what cost to, you know, other people who might benefit from that a moment of self, um, of self what, self adventure, or selfish adventure? I would call when you are faced with pockets of 
utter poverty, utter desperation, and in that you just consider yourself to say, I will be able to write in the in the annals of history that I've been uh, been to the moon and back. Who else can beat me at that? No, nah, that's that's the, the the antithesis of Ubuntu. Ubuntu says we we oh, there's another expression where we say if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go further, go together. When you go together, you are including everyone. Everyone is, 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 is everyone's stomach has something in it. You, they are, you, nobody is crying tears of from hunger or pain in, 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 in juice or perpetrated by another another person. So those are some of the items which we, Ubuntu, you know, really zeroes upon that we are looking at the comfort of everyone nature included nature itself because nature is that bounty which we receive without having you know um, really gone out of ourselves to create trees we we don't even know how trees started but we use it. we don't even know how the hydrological cycle you know works but when we start you know uh, harvesting forests like they're doing in in the in the uh, rainforest areas, you see aerial images of Brazil forests, which are supposed to be the 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 uh, the, um, the citadel, the, the 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 source of much of our rain, because they, they are part of the convention cycle, of the, the hydrological cycle of how rain and water comes to be. Imagine when that whole forest, especially in Brazil, it's all cut down. For, for quick profits, what's going to happen? Droughts will be a common feature because nature nature is able to adjust itself. It doesn't care. It adjusts itself. One day you see in, in an eruption of a, a volcano, uh, for maybe a, a, a century later, you find some grasses growing on that. On that thing. Nature controls itself. We have no control over that. Although some people will want to claim, oh yeah, we are we are so uh, you know conscient, we are so um, uh, we know everything. We we can even uh, okay. Uh, you see, at one point uh, there was a drought back in 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 the then Rhodesia, you now Zimbabwe. The authorities then said, well, you know what? We we can actually create we can create rain. We know how to do it. We, it's been scientifically proved. We use crystal iodide. We shoot it into the those empty clouds. If, if, at some point, if they're going to coalesce and the rain would fall. Yes, rain did fall um, after you know so many experiments. And um, where did it actually fall? Oh, the 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 winds blew that rain cloud to neighboring Zambia. Zambia actually <laughs> received the rain. So after all those efforts of saying, oh, we know, we know, I'm just using that as an example of how scientifically, uh, uh, you know, uh, invested we might be to say, yeah, we, we, we know more science. We, and we, we, we take out the heart of living. Was, you see, all this, what I'm saying is, if you don't have the heart, the empathy of, conceptualizing phenomena from another angle, from another uh, angle of the characters or actors involved, you, you, you haven't grown your personhood to the full. When you realize that, no, you are not in charge, you, you might be thinking that the cogito ego sum, you know, but you only know so much, <laughs> you don't know everything, whereas the universe itself knows everything and those endowments it can evaporate any time. You, so you'd rather work in in harmony and in peace with the rest of the environment than to um, uh, lionize yourself and say, "Yeah, you see, you see, I am." You see, you, you see, even the human beings cannot uh, find um, those ultimate, uh, you know, praise-worthy uh, titles than referring to nature because you say oh i'm as brave as a lion is but you didn't create the lion you you don't know much about the lion anyway so you don't claim to don't over claim but just work in harmony with nature so that's that's uh, i'll end there thank you very much <laughs>
Thank you so much, Joel. Um, I do see there's a hand. Um, Emerald, did you want to say something? Yes, thank you for this presentation, this talk. Um, I think oh, one you. thing that stood out to me was um, how you said Ubuntu requires negotiation. Um, and it seems like um, for what Ubuntu, Ubuntu is, it would require a lot of negotiation and you would like the people who are at the table negotiating would have to agree at least on, um, I would say basic or fundamental principles. Whereas mm -hmm. I see in Western culture, um, we can't really agree on what those good fundamental principles are. So how can there be this sense of Ubuntu and Western culture if we're not starting at the same place? Because we have different cultures with different values. So how can we agree on what is good or best or harmonious for the larger community or society? Oh, thank you very much, Emory, for that question. Uh, the, I, I like the way you have phrased it and framed it. The, the, the way that you've included the word community in it. Community means exactly that. That means every voice, every entity has to be represented when you make those uh, decisions. Even the, the most uh, outlandish ideas, they have to be part of the discussion at this round table. We, we cannot assume that we know everything. So sometimes, uh, sometimes it takes time to, to get to a conclusion which is sustainable, which includes everyone. And that's why we, we said the, 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 the governance of the Ubuntu, that, is, that, is that uh, if you could bring back the, the, um, the slide with the governance, with the governance, um, Yes, it's also governance there. That is the, 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 the crucial part there. That if we assume, because now we're talking of a globalized world, but before it becomes globalized, it's localized. So in your local community, it, what is it you're going to bring to the, um, to the globalized? Because you, within that local community, there must be discussions on every aspect of the uh, idea you have. You include everyone. Everyone comes to the table. Have you considered this? Have you considered this? How about that? How about the disabled? Oh, how about the, 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 this idea which we don't know much about? So the, then you go back to the drawing table. You, you still have to find out. Do your research. That is time consuming, yes. But what is the point of rushing to make a decision which you will find to be disastrous and unsustainable? You take the decision of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the scientific decision of saying, well, you know, we, 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 we need to um, uh, get rid of um, pests. Somebody actually got we got a prize for 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 for, for, for manufacturing. I mean, for discovering that. And at the, the, the time, even now, they're still being praised for for manufacturing or distributing pests. If somebody who has the sympathy and empathy of the bees, and they come to the table and say, "Have you really considered?" that you are actually killing us. Because remember, we are saying we are only recent arrivals. Bees have been here before us. They've been responsible for cross-pollinating, you know, you know, all those cultivars way before we came here. But we now say, oh, we know more. We are, we, we are scientific. We can, we can, but that is working uh, against us. I've talked about how all these pesticides leach into the soil, leach into our hydrological cycle. So we are poisoning ourselves. So we 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 say we are in a hurry. We are in a hurry, and they mistakenly uh, and, and make the the idea that 
the, 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 we need to produce more, so we need to cut corners. But Ubuntu has a way. I've talked of, um, of companion planting, which is very natural, where nature controls itself. Yes, biodiversity is another issue there. Biodiversity means a, some entity is going to be eaten or used by another entity for its own survival. But that's how nature is. It isn't, but once you have, uh, you, you reduce the biodiversity, once you reduce the biodiversity, we now come back to the question of COVID. We, we don't know whether COVID-19 was transmitted because of our uh, encroaching on the natural environment where in the past diseases would pass from one animal to the next animal to the next to the next entity uh, and then by the time it comes to in contact with human beings well it's, 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 it's now been uh, neutralized whereas if we keep encroaching the, 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 the and reducing biodiversity by monocropping as I was saying, because we are more with monocropping, you are growing the same crop on the same ground year after year. Whatever used to grow in that patch has been killed, either by fungicides, pesticides, and, 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 and herbicides especially. You see, those, those, those weeds, which you call weeds, had a purpose to enrich the soil, to keep it in its cramp structure, in its healthy state. And you have your earthworms working underground, you know, uh, converting that litter, those dead leaves, back into the soil, back into nature, and they will uh, raise a healthy crop without any GMOs, without any interference of the, the chemicals, which work at our detriment. So, is that a holistic way of looking at environment to mean whatever? we see is seen and whatever we don't see is unseen which is part and parcel of the environment must be given its chance to do what its dna was earmarked to do by the creator no we we, we are not this is this is an engineering business of saying we're going to do this we're, we don't even know the end result what is the end result of eating or feeding a nation or nations on a genetically modified food. We don't, it's, 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 it's such an adventure, an unknown and risky adventure. What if it's going to create a new strain of disease, which it was never there before? Because the, the food we eat becomes us. We are what we eat. Because the, 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 the genetic compounds of those foods are what makes our bodies. So if we're going to make our bodies out of what, is, what nature hasn't given us, but what scientists, scientists have introduced into nature, what do we know about that? Well, we, we are what we eat. That's the final the, 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 the benchmark there. So... It's to our own interest to work with nature as given to us, not as engineered by, by us. Us meaning those scientists who claim we've invented this, we've invented this, and much of that claim is based on quick minds of making profit. They want to make profit. They they, they want to to, or to 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 establish their their names on the uh, on on the human uh, repertoire of achievements. They will now say, "I'm the inventor of this and that. I invented this and that." But those are potential poisons. How are you going to? Where do you even begin to to redress that when we ingest? Like I said at the beginning, there are cases now coming to the, to, the spring, to, to the legal system. People are now saying, ha, huh. I'll give an example. Some diseases which we now have in, in Africa were never there. 
before. Take um, anthrax. Take rinderpest. Those two uh, 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 diseases I've mentioned only came to Africa. I mean, yes, came to Africa, especially to, to Zimbabwe through the pioneer column. Oh, who is the pioneer column? That was the, 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 the uh, 50 odd uh, settlers who came in under the commission of, uh, of uh, Cecil John Rhodes uh, and they were coming to occupy, to occupy that uh, vacant land because they never wanted to, 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 to think, uh, you know, there were people there. You know, that, uh, um, uh, that, that um, assumption that the local people were not there really because they were very nomadic, they, were, they never settled. But we have evidence that we, there were settlements in, in Zimbabwe, which even date uh, back to the 11th uh, century. I mean, structures which are still there. Take the Zimbabwe monument. You can Google search it, Zimbabwe monument. Now, um, it was it occupation when the settler column came in uh, headed by uh, Cecil John Rhodes uh, and um, uh, that so-called you know pioneer column, they were there to distort, distort the information, claiming that this area was vacant. So even those stone structures, which to to date have now been confirmed, that yeah they were built by the local people. The local people, uh, the archaeology is now, you know, is now confirmed that. But at the time, the idea was to distort the, that information to say, no, these were, oh, these are too uh, intricate and complicated. They couldn't have been uh, created by the, or built by the local people. These are people are backward. They, I mean, they couldn't have done this. This must have been done by aliens. Oh, some were even saying, oh, these are the, 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 the this fabled King Solomon's mines we've discovered. King Solomon's mines, these are local, you know, you know, Mashona, you know, products. Because imagine, imagine when you Google the Zimbabwe monument or Zimbabwe, they were, we now call it monument. They were actually calling them ruins. They said these are ruins. Ruins of whom? Oh, of aliens who once came to live in this part of the world. They, they couldn't have been built by the local people. Why were they so adamant to say that? Because that was the colonial philosophy. Colonial philosophy of uh, disowning the locals. That they, they couldn't have done this. But the evidence has been, is now, it's been concluded that this monument, you see, why was it that special? You see, because we are looking at slabs of granite. Granite is the hardest stone you can ever get to work with, to sculpt it. It's, 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 now, these were uh, 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 pieces of granite rock laid layer upon layer, forming a conical structure and an enclosure and there was not any mortar in between them. You have to be a, a, a very special kind of engineer to be able to build a structure such as that with no mortar. And it has survived all these centuries. You see, it shows the, the, the depth and the creativity, the, the architectural genius of the people who were there. That's even before People in, 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 in people in England, where these, these settlers were coming from, they didn't have those structures at that time. They didn't even have. They were still living in wattle and daub you know, accommodations. But here, back in the 11th century, were glorious architectural designs of the finest uh, level existing. And they're still existing right now. That's why we changed the name from Zimbabwe ruins to Zimbabwe monument, because that is a standing testimony of the ingenuity of the local people working with the hardest stone you can ever get to build structures which have stood the taste of time.
in the eighties, etc., were saying, "Oh, this, this, this was empty land. Uh, you know, this is empty. There is no one." Ah, the people were nomadic. Why were they nomadic? Because they were using the natural resources available for food and shelter according to the seasons. So when it was time to move to another place with the new, um, with, with the new opportunities, they would do that instead of remaining in those uh, deprived areas. So the, the settler will say, well, it's unoccupied because uh, we, the, we, the, the people are just moving season to season and, and so on, so we, we have a right to occupy. You see? Now, what does that show us of the temperament of the occupier? Lack of empathy. There's no empathy. If, you, see, you see, they actually took advantage of our generosity to welcome them. Because that's what happened. Once we welcome them, because that's in you know, the Ubuntu thing, we, we, we welcome strangers. Because we have an understanding that in, in a visitor or a stranger, if you feed them, if you are hospitable to them, they do not take away the granary. You still have, you know, access to your granary. We, after all, nature is there. Because the, 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 this philosophy of Ubuntu is no one owns the land. The or land is owned by, by um, the creator. That's, that's who owns. Our job is to work with the land in a sustainable way. Whereas the, 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 the incoming settler community uh, believed in uh, ownership of land. You, you buy a piece of land, it's now yours. You can do whatever you want with it. They even asked to, 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 to ask the chief to, to dig a hole. Uh, to look for minerals, then the chief says, okay, yeah, you can dig one hole there. You know, it doesn't deprive us of the minerals we already have. Uh, we, you know, we use them. But before the, the, the settlers, uh, before the, the locals knew it, that generosity was mistaken for weakness because soon after being shown um, the, the area and being told that, ah, you know what, over here we have a spring. This spring is, it, is everlasting. It never dries up. Over here we have this and that. We have this and that. All these are natural, you know, bounties. Before you knew it, there was now a new administration, um, you know, which was now saying, ah, this is demarcated land. This is now for the white settler. You know, you now move, move to those other places which are uh, water deprived or drought prone. Then you see, how how did we get to this point? We we uh, okay. I'll refer you to a document. The document is called the Rad Concession, R U D D. Then concession, R U D D. That is the document which. The, the claim, oh, we signed, your chief signed here, and you see the document, there's an X. After all these intricate legal languages saying, well, this and that is being inherited, this we now given permission to what, 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 and then there's the X signifying the accent of the, uh, the, the, the local chief, Lobengula. Now, on realizing that he had been tricked, the local people say no. We, we are, after all, no one, even you, the chief, don't own the land. So why do these newcomers think who they are? Why are they, why are they appropriating the, all the land? And now, to cut a long story short, um, prior to this arrival of the settler community, there were mediums, spirit mediums, who had warned the people. Mediums, you know, they, 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 they say the visions which they are given, wherever those come from. They told the people that, ah, we see visions of visitors coming, and these visitors don't have knees. They don't have knees. Hmm. Then the people were saying, how can, 
How can, if people are coming, that means they're walking, there's mobility. How can they walk if they don't have knees? So you, your, your, your vision must be, uh, must be faulty somewhere. Because if these are people, they must have knees. We're talking of the 1890s. We're talking of 1890, right? And as, the, as it would happen, those people came. And then prior to that, the mediums had also predicted that where, once these uh, visitors come, you are going to lose a lot of cattle, a lot of livestock because of an unknown disease. And a combination of other diseases will affect you. So when that occupation now is in place, the mediums just said to the people, we, we told you that there were people, oh, now you're wondering why, 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 why didn't the, these people have knees? Well, because they're wearing long, long trousers. Locally, the people, we, 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 we just, you know, dressed appropriately for this very clement weather. We, we didn't have to wear, you know, long, long, long pairs of trousers. Now, the people are now realizing that that medium prediction is now coming into place. It's now, it's now in place. They are now losing their cattle. Why? The horses... And the cattle, which he had been used to draw the ox wagons to cross the Limpopo River into the then Mashona land, carried that disease, which was never there in, 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 the, in our part of the world. The anthrax and the rinder pest. And so the people were now caught in between, you know, a hard rock and a dry place. They had to fight. That's when we had the first Chimurenga war. Chimurenga means... Some of you must have heard of Chimurenga music and so on. It means uh, uprising, uprising, Chimurenga. We, are, we, we, we don't have any other way because we've let in, uh, we let in uh, someone who is uh, or visitors who are now occupying and dominating us. And hence the first Chimurenga war of 1896, 1896, right? 1896 that was quickly crushed by the incoming, uh, the, they call themselves the pioneer column. They, they crushed it, why? Because they had superior you know, arms. They were using Maxine guns, they were using you know, a, a revol I mean, um, guns against people using assay guys, spears, shields, and arrows, right? And then, but because of sheer numbers, the settler community was almost over, or overcome. And so Sisu John Rhodes decided to hold an indaba. Indaba means a, a, a discussion to, to settle. Because they couldn't, they couldn't do the mining, they couldn't do the farming, because people were, were saying, well, what's there to live for? We might as well, you know, just die in the struggle. That's why it's called the, the Chimreng. And now, those mediums again, you know, were 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 were, were, were you know um, apprehended by the authorities in saying, "Well, you're the ones who are inciting the people to to rise against us," and so on and so on. And so there were these all these communications, and then there was a second Chimurenga in 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 1897. 97, that Chimurenga was the the most bitter because the, 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 the was the, the, now the Shona and the Ndebele were now combined and they say, no, we got to, we, we, we got to fight, we, 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 we got to fight. And then that battle went on. Rhodes again called for an, an Indaba to, an Indaba, that's a meeting to, to resolve the issue. But at that time, Lobengula had left his crawl, I mean, his homestead, because he, he knew he had betrayed his own people and he, these people whom they had accepted as you know as strangers and were being had been uh, treated safely and in a humane way had turned against them. So there was that you know desperation, and then the that those Chimurengas were finally crushed because of far force of arms and those so. The occupation of that land, of our land, was now by might to say now 
we, we have occupied this we, we, I mean, because we fought you and we, we, we defeated you. So this is now ours. So all along now, the people are now saying, look, we, we can't just let this happen. We, 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 we can't talk with these guys. We, that's when this whole idea of uh, um, uh, guerrilla fighting then started right up to, you know, by the 60s, people were now more organized to say, look, let's, let's do this. So fast forward, 1965, there's now a government uh, led by a, a guy, a white man called Ian Smith. Ian Smith now made it even worse because he, he said, you know, <laughs> yeah, you see, not in a thousand years will you see a, will you see a, a black man ruling this it was now called southern rhodesia you know as opposed to northern rhodesia which is zambia so he says you know not in a thousand years ah so people are now saying look we are now in a do or die situation we can't live our lives in this god-given land given to us by 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 our Mari. Mari means God. People, you know, they, they they couldn't understand how this could be, and the only way was to fight, and so the guerrilla war started. And so cadres were trained in neighboring countries. Some were sent to the to China, to the Soviet Union, to to to, to Yugoslavia to train in because you see they'd been crushed by force of arms. And locally, people were singing. Now, singing those Shimurenga songs. Those Shimurenga, if you type in Shimurenga in your, in your Google search, you find all that. And the Shimurenga music, which is all about retaining our dignity and our, uh, our heritage. So, while that was happening, because now people were saying, okay, a thousand years. So in a thousand years, we've been subjugation of these strangers whom we accommodated in, out of generosity, our own generosity, to share the environment. Now they're dominating us. How can that be? Which shows that those strangers, those settlers, didn't have empathy. If somebody had come to their own areas and occupied them, they would have been also up in arms. And so when Ian Smith says, not in a thousand years, the uh, the tension became even more acrimonious, more desperate, and people were determined to win by sheer numbers because the central community was only a handful of people. So, fast forward, Lancaster House in 97, 90, in, uh, in, 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 in 1997. We, we are moving from the 18, 1800, 18, 1890 was the first occupation. Then we go into the hundreds, they, all these way, the British government, because they, they were the final authority, because they were saying this is, Rhodes was trying to claim, Cecil John Rhodes was trying to claim uh, um, this, the whole continent from Cape to Cairo. That's his own words when he was prime minister at the, of Cape Town. Uh, in, 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 in 1992. So he was saying, you know, I want to claim this land for queen, our queen. Uh, and uh, notice how the occupation, uh, how it started with all the naming. Because the, the place where the, when the Pioneer Column in 1890 crossed the Limpopo River into this land of ours, they settled at a place which they called Queen Victoria. So, so Victoria. So Victoria, that's naming a place, occupying a place. Then where they did their final settlement and where they established the city, the capital city, when once they are occupied, they call it Salisbury. Who is Salisbury? The, the then British Prime Minister. You see how the, the occupation is happening. And the people are now getting aware. And people are now forming parties. I remember my, my grandfather was in one of those parties. They, they called it I see you. I see you there meant we now see who you really are. We, we, uh, we, we accepted you as, as, um, as strangers needing help just as much as we would need help if we, for some reason, we, found us, we find ourselves in, in another land. We would expect other people to, 
to behave in, in, a, in a hospitable way. But now look at what you do. We now see you. So that was the genesis of the term Vanavevu. Vanavevu means people of the soil. So people of the soil rose up. So when Ian Smith made that decision in 1965 that no black person will be in power politically here and no black person will vote. You see, because there were all those dispensations. If you can't even vote, your voice is ignored. So, so Lancaster House in 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 in, 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 uh, in 19, um, 1978 you know 79 is in Lancaster House 79 the the British and the rest of the community had imposed sanctions and so on, but there were sanctions, you know, avoidance and so on. And South Africa was helping surreptitiously, you know, assisting the Zimbabwean economy to stay to stay robust and so on. And so that's when the, remember I talked about that iodide expression, you know, experiment where they said, "Oh, we are scientifically, you know, advanced. We can even create rain." See, that was a part of the 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 the, 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 the uh, psychological you know um, uh, empowerment of the the settler to say we know we we are almost gods we can do anything right so the people they couldn't take it so the the, the, the the outside world were now imposing sanctions on the entire country and like I said South Africa was helping but um, South Africa was also now saying well these sanctions are also ruining our economy. And uh, as such, we, 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 we must agree to come to a settlement. So the then conservative government of Margaret Thatcher, right? Of Margaret Thatcher, imagine a conservative a willing to, um, to, a conservative government. Remember the conservatives are in line with the occupying and dominating. The, the colonial, you know, arm of whatever dispensation you're talking about. They now say, well, okay, let's bring this to a close. And hence, the Lancaster House uh, uh, the, the talks. And he, through the Lancaster House talks, there was compromise now to say, okay, whereas you were in this, along these hard lines of saying blacks cannot rule, Let's now say, okay, we'll give you a grace period of, of 10 years where you were kind of uh, adjusting. Because remember, the, 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 the white population was very small compared to the, the black I mean, it was, it, it was just insane to say, how can other people dominate others? Because we allowed them to come in. And they, they now say, you know, by force of arms, we are in charge. So... Um, the, then the dispensation ended with the declaration, I mean, with the coming of or realization of independence on the 18th of April, 1980. Prince Charles was down there in, in Harare. By that time, I was you know, studying in England. So we were watching all these, these proceedings on, uh, on, on TV and then the celebrations for, for, the, uh, for the independence of... of, of uh, uh, of Rhodesia, now assuming the name Zimbabwe. Okay, now that name Zimbabwe is referring to those iconic structures which had been, which the settler community wanted, wanted to disinform, misinform everyone, distort, and just damage. In fact, there were efforts to 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 to, to destroy it, but they couldn't. Because of the the, 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 the strength and the, the agility and the, the f refined um, architecture which it was made out of, so the 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 um, some of the artifacts had been even been shipped to to England as part of you know occupation. We now dominate here, and. Uh, the one set of icons were the Zimbabwe bird, which was a kind of spiritual eagle, which was a part of the community's spiritual um, uh, culture. The, 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 the independence, uh, the then uh, Prime Minister Robert Mugabe asked for those birds to be returned to, um, to 
to, to, to Zimbabwe and from other quarters of the world where the people, the settlers, had just looted, you know, the local heritage. And at the same time, uh, the, the remember the okay, I didn't finish that part where those mediums were were uh, put on firing squad to say you are the ones who in, instigating all the all these uh, uh, insurrections and and uh, uh, disruption of our otherwise smooth way of of government. Their heads had been you know sent to one of their heads, one of the heads of the the, the um, of this female spirit medium had been uh, taken as a trophy to England. It was there in 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 Victoria um, Museum. When I was a student, I actually saw it. It is labeled the head of you know Mbuya um, in in Victoria uh, um, Museum in London, London itself. I see. So those 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 you know. I mean, iconic, um, you know, things which had been appropriated in such a, a very uh, strident and uh, with no sympathy, with no, I mean, it's, it's just robbery, okay? They, they were now returned to, to, to Zimbabwe and all that. So there, there are all these other situations where you say, okay, empathy, if, we do whatever we do if we don't have empathy for either the characters indirectly involved in what we are doing or the part of the environment or whatever we will do such atrocious things which at the end of the day we will be ashamed of because look at it the, all this could have been avoided you know if there wasn't that if, if there was any empathy at all between the, the settler who had been given that opportunity to to, to stay, you know, you, you be part of us. We 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 are here, we, you know. We share, but no, they, they thought of themselves as more superior and more deserving, and hence we had all this trouble. Just as much as it was happening in South Africa, because if the, the settler, you know, we had the, the mind of the local people who were living in harmony with nature, there wouldn't have been any of these the, 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 the treasures. Okay, take what's happening in Russia right now. I mean, in, 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 in Ukraine, just just the scale of oh, what do they call it? Uh, collateral damage. Collateral damage when people, when innocent human beings are killed, they are maimed, they 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 they, they 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 are eliminated from the face of the earth. Who give who gave men that authority to kill others? Who who we, you see? We are not killing for food. You're killing for resources. You want more resources to yourself. That is very anti, anti, you know, uh, Ubuntu. Ubuntu philosophy. You live in harmony. You take from nature what you need because of biodiversity. Remember, I said the definition of biodiversity involves the question that or the issue that one entity was put on this earth either for the health or for the upkeep of another. So there, is, there will be that. But he, 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 by the same dispensation, you don't just go out to, uh, to, to, to kill things. For example, part of the, the pioneer column, what Rhodes wanted, because he was saying he, he wants to occupy Africa from the, from the Cape to Cairo. Some of you, if you, if you type in Cape to Cairo image, you will see the roads astride across Africa to say we want to occupy all this. And part of that occupation was they wanted trophies. They wanted to kill you know, the big five, the, the elephants, just kill them for a trophy so that you put it on your mental piece at home, wherever you are, either in, in, in England or in, in Germany or wherever. You have a trophy to say, oh, I killed that animal. Is that what we are supposed to do as human beings? Just to kill for the sake of, for the fun of killing. It's easy. The, the, so among that pioneer column were hunters, hunters, game hunters who were paid to go and uh, look, look, look for the, um, uh, the, the to, to look for this game. So it was all out of selfish, you know, human selfishness, which started all this. And we still have wars going on. 
if we learn a thing or two about our own history, we should incorporate empathy as, 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 as an ingredient to govern our behavior. Thank you. Joel, thank you so much. Um, it's amazing. So much interesting uh, work that you're doing and the history and everything is so rich. So thank you so much, um, Emerald, for that question. And um, yeah, it's been amazing, Joel, to sort of hear your thoughts on everything. So thank you so much again. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. <laughs>